today on Inspiration for the Day. Jesus, rise up. I said, in the name of Jesus, rise up from whatever your affliction is today. Rise up because you'll be able to leap and praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, I want you to know the joy of the Lord is your strength. Somebody say glory. You may be seated. Amen. Oh, yeah, that's all right. It's all right to get happy in the Holy Ghost. Amen. It's all right to get filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. To get full and overflowing and touch somebody with the presence of Jesus. Oh, praise God for his goodness, love, and mercy. Hallelujah. In Romans chapter 10 and verse 14, the Apostle Paul says, How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can they preach unless some are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. But not all of Israelites accepted the good news. For Israel says, Lord, who has believed our message? Consequently, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word. Today, when we think about Christ, we think about the one who came to bring us the good news. You see, God has always had a message. John the Baptist, as Jesus was coming down off that mountain towards the Jordan River, He pointed at Jesus and he said, Behold the Lamb of God who taketh away the sins of the world. Oh, praise God. He said the Lamb of God is coming forward today to be able to reveal the heart of God who is going to take away the sins of the world. And so this message is the message of hope. John was one who went to prepare the way. He was the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Make straight the paths of the Lord. Amen. You see, God said, I'm going to send a predecessor so that the way is opened up so that when I come, people are going to be ready. Jesus said, behold, the kingdom of heaven is near. The kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven is near. It has come to you. The kingdom of God has come in the flesh. Hallelujah. So you see, when John the Baptist had this message, he had to tell somebody about who Jesus is. How many of you know that each one of us that have been saved by the blood of the Lamb, we've got to tell somebody. In fact, you know, Peter and John, after Jesus rose from the dead, they were spreading the message, and all these people were getting saved, 3,000, 5,000. And so the Sanhedrin said, hey, we're going to lock you up, and we're going to not let you out till you say you're going to quit preaching about this man named Jesus. 
They said, whether it's right in your eyes to preach about Jesus, they said, we don't know. But this one thing we know, we can't help but preach about the things that we have seen and heard. We can't help it. Something is stirring in our soul that says, I got to tell somebody about what Jesus can do. How many of you know what Jesus can do today? Are there anyone here who can say, I know what Jesus can do? Hallelujah. You know you've been touched by the master's hand. And when you've been touched by the master's hand, you know something has happened. That's the power of the gospel. The power of the gospel to heal. Oh, praise the Lord. His healing streams of rivers of living water are flowing through you even now. You can already celebrate because the Lord has already told you that by his stripes you are healed. So you can begin to thank him because he's, he's healing you. He's blessing you. He's strengthening you. Maybe it's an emotional scar that, that you need that healing touch of Jesus. So many people were raised in situations where sometimes alcoholisms or drug addictions and, and things that began to tear at you even as you were a little boy or a little girl. But you know what? One day Jesus passes by. And you know when Jesus passes by, healing comes into your spirit. Jesus, wherever he went, he said, be made whole. How many of you know he's speaking that to your spirit now? Be made whole. Be made whole this day. Hallelujah. You know, the man with the withered hand, he reached out. He, he said, stretch forth thine hand. Hallelujah. Take your faith and stretch it. Aren't you stretching your faith today? And he, as he stretched his hand, God made it whole. Aren't you thankful today that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever? The same man who was blind, Bartimaeus, one minute, was now called just Bartimaeus, the seeing man. Hallelujah. Because Jesus Christ passed by. Oh, this is the message. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word. When you hear about what Jesus has done, it causes faith to rise up in your soul. Amen. Because that word has activated inside of your spirit. Amen. That word begins to take hold of you. How many of you know God's got a hold of you this morning? I said God's got a hold of you this morning. He is moving and stirring in your soul. And as he moves and stirs your soul, you've got a message. Every one of us, Paul said, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. To everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For herein the righteousness of God has been revealed from faith to faith, for it is written, The just shall live by faith. Amen. How many of you are walking by faith today? I'm walking by faith in Jesus, in who he is, in the revelation of what God has given to me about his son Jesus. And as a result of that, I'm walking and I'm telling the good news of Jesus. Jesus said, go into all the world and preach this gospel, baptizing them in the name of the Father and Son and of the Holy Spirit, making disciples of all people. Hallelujah. I got news for you today. When the Holy Ghost gets a hold of you, He'll begin to take you and shake you up. Some of you say, well, I ain't ready to get shaken up yet, preacher. Well, I tell you what, he'll shake some things off of you, amen? Oh, he'll, he'll break some chains of addictions in your life, amen? He'll shake them off, hallelujah. He'll shake you real good. I mean, the power of God will shake you from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. All you got to do is let go and let God have his way. It's time that we let go and let God have his way and get out of the way sometimes. That old rigid part of you, that stiff-necked part of you, you need to let it go. You say, you're not talking about me, preacher. Y'all are pointing the other direction. You know, you got both hands going, oh, he's talking about him or her. Amen. But God wants you to understand that he can break through the shackles. Jeremiah said the word of God is like a hammer. Hammer that can break the chains that are trying to bind you up. That hammer, hallelujah, that can go and nail the point home. 
Because God wants you to have greater understanding of the power of this message. This message has gone into people who have lost hope. You know, I, I've heard about people who were, they were at the very bottom, but God's word came in and said, don't lose hope. Don't give up. I spoke to somebody this past week, and she, she had forgotten the power of the message. But I began to speak to her spirit and tell her what God was telling me to tell her to lift her spirit up. Hallelujah. Because I knew she was so oppressed at that time. She felt hopeless. But how many of you know that there's always hope because this is a message of hope. Hallelujah. It is the good news. Hallelujah. That God can lift you up. And even if you've been saved... Sometimes you can let the enemy cause you to, to doubt. Even John the Baptist doubted when he was in a dungeon. No greater prophet, but he sent out a message to Jesus. He said, are you the one or am I to look for another? Jesus said, the poor have the gospel preached to them. Blinded eyes can see. The deaf can hear. Just go and tell John the Baptist the things that I'm doing. Hallelujah. And then he'll know deep inside his heart that the truth that he said that day as he was walking towards the River Jordan is the same truth that whenever John the Baptist found himself in the dungeon. How many of you know he's the same when you're on the mountain and he's the same when you're in the valley? He's the lily of the valley. He's the bright and morning star. He's the fairest of 10,000 to my soul. Hallelujah. My soul is blessed because thou, O Lord, art, art a guard around me. You're, my lift, you're the lifter of my head. You lift us up. How many of you know that word comes to you and faith rises up whenever you hear the word of Jesus? In fact, you know, uh, Peter and John were walking outside the, the temple and they had been in worshiping God in the temple. And there was a man out by the game and he said I need some help and he thought he was going to get some money but they had something better here's a man lame never could walk couldn't walk couldn't leap to his feet but they looked down at him Peter says silver and gold have I none but such as I have I give unto thee in the name of Jesus, rise up. I said, in the name of Jesus, rise up. I said, in the name of Jesus, rise up from whatever your affliction is today. Rise up because you'll be able to leap and praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, I want you to know the joy of the Lord is your strength. And it's your joy. Don't let the devil steal your joy. Oh, I tell you what. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rejoice in what the Lord has done. Like the scripture said earlier, rejoice, and I say again, rejoice. Paul was in prison when he wrote that. Rejoice, and I say again, rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord. I rejoice in this message. I rejoice that this gospel is going out into China right now. How many of you are thankful that God's word is going into China right now and breaking down the barriers and people are getting saved and filled with the Holy Ghost? There's revival going on in China. There were times when the communists said, we're going to get rid of this whole belief in God. There won't be anybody talking about God in the Soviet Union because we're going to trample it out. Well, I got news for you. Their boots couldn't trample it out. Hallelujah. Oh, all their guns couldn't trample Trample it out because God's word rose up inside the hearts of men and women. You cannot get rid of the word of God. Hallelujah. This message is going to go into all the world. Jesus said that the message of this gospel shall be preached unto the, all the world and then shall the end come. How many of you know through television right now, you can go and see a shack that don't have running water, but it might have a satellite signal. Amen. It's got the internet. People with cell phones all over the world, they got it right there in their hand, and they can hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. Oh, I'm excited about this message, for I understand that it brings transformation. 
in people's lives. I, I heard this uh, Rabbi Zen Pora, he was talking on YouTube. There again, uh, a person in Tel Aviv, Israel, and I can hear about him over here in the States. You see, somebody started sharing Jesus with him over the Internet. And he said, well, I'm a Jew. He said, uh, that's not for me. And they said, well, let me share a few scriptures with you. And they began to share the scriptures with this young man. Had a very prestigious job at the time, and, and he kept being intrigued. And then finally he said, well, you know, this Jesus, Yeshua, he, he is maybe the Messiah of the Gentiles, but just not of the Jews. It's good that they have a Messiah, but we're still waiting on ours. But then he began to pray and meditate, and it kept coming to him so he went to his father who was a rabbi and and told him about finding out who Yeshua was and went to his grandpa I found out who the Messiah is who is it it's Yeshua what it wasn't a happy time no his grandpa loved him and had always just been so good to him but took a plate hurled it at him and hit him on the top of the head, cut his head open. He said, you won't be a part of this family till you renounce Yeshua. And he said, well, I can never renounce my Savior, my Lord. There's power in the gospel. That's why the enemy fights it so hard. That's why when Stephen was preaching Jesus, they got so angry they picked up stones, didn't they? And he said, this same Jesus whom you crucified, he's the Lord, he's the Savior, he's the Messiah. And he began to preach the good news. Hallelujah. He didn't care if it was hard. He didn't care if they had stones because when they began to hurl the stones, he looked up into heaven and he said, I see Jesus. Standing at the Father's right hand. Oh, I'm just about to have a homecoming. Hallelujah. You see, because he knew that message that was in his soul was going to touch somebody there that day. And there was a young man named Saul of Tarsus that was there that day who heard the message of Jesus. Hallelujah. And God had planted a seed. And that seed would come forth in the harvest time. Hallelujah. When Paul was on the road to Damascus and God got a hold of him, Saul of Tarsus became Paul the apostle. Saul, the persecutor of the church, became Paul the pillar of the church. Why? Because of the transforming power of the message of Jesus Christ. Amen. There's power in the message of Christ. The good news that God would love you enough that he would give his only begotten son so that when you believe in him, you shall not perish, but you shall have everlasting life. Oh, death, where is thy victory? Oh, grave, where is thy sting? Hallelujah. He said, I've already been triumphant over that. So you don't have to worry. You don't have to fret. You don't have to be dismayed. Hallelujah. Because this message of Jesus Christ will set the captive free. Hallelujah. How many of you know Jesus said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to set the captives free. To preach the acceptable day of our Lord. Hallelujah. He said, I came to preach this good news. I came to heal, to minister. I came to touch people's lives. I came to give them hope when they felt like God was through with them. When the other people told them they weren't they wasn't able to be a believer in God because of their track record, because of their lifestyle. But Jesus passes by. And all at once, that Samaritan woman says, there's some living water for me too. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter about my past. God still loves me. You're a Jew telling me a Samaritan that God loves me. Oh, and out of the innermost of her being began to flow rivers of living water. It's a well of water springing up unto everlasting life. That woman that day was transformed by the power of God. 
Jesus told her all things about her past, but he didn't hold it against her. Hallelujah. He said, I know your past and I know your present, but I'm going to give you a future. How many of you know God can give you a future today? It doesn't matter what your past is. And she got excited. And then she went back to Samaria and then she preached the message. Some people say, well, how could she preach the message? She had been too sinful. No, God is in the redemption business. He's in the recycling business. Oh, he'll take you and he'll recycle you. And he'll do a work inside of you so that somebody can see that God is able to change your life. Hallelujah. God is able to take a person full of bitterness. And he's able to make you a person that releases that bitterness. Hallelujah. Oh, he's able to make you a person that can wake up in the morning singing a song of gladness. Oh, praise the Lord. Now, I know some of y'all, when y'all come to church, y'all sing kind of quiet, you know, when you're out in the congregation. But when you get home in that shower, oh, man, you're making a joyful noise unto the Lord. Oh, I'm telling you. I, how many of you know how to make a joyful noise unto the Lord? Amen. He said, that's what I want to hear is a joyful noise. Because when it comes from you, I want to hear it. Because I care about it because it's your voice I want to hear. Amen. Because that makes the Father smile. When he hears the voice of his children praising him and understanding the power you have. Jesus said to pray that there be laborers to go out in the harvest. For the laborers are few. He said, pray that there be laborers to go and reap the harvest. You see, you're one of those laborers. I said, you're one of the laborers. The fields are wide unto harvest. Oh, yeah. Sometimes they may not be ready. Sometimes you may witness to them and you may plant a seed. But know this, that God is going to send somebody to water that seed. Paul said, I planted, Apollos watered. And God gave the increase. How many of you know God is taking what you're, the seed you're sowing and somebody else is watering it? Hallelujah. And God is going to get the increase because down the road, somebody's going to get saved because of your testimony. The Bible says that they overcame the enemy by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. How many of you know you've got a testimony today? Some of you have been through some tests. And you can tell how God has brought you through. And you know what? People can argue scriptures, but they cannot argue with a personal testimony. What God, look at what God's done in my life. Amen. They may want to try to get you into a debate, but don't fall into a trap. Just keep the focus on Jesus. Amen. They may want to take you all around the world. You get it back on Jesus. Because I, I tell you now, when you get to talking about Jesus, something begins to happen. The Holy Spirit begins to move. Oh, yeah. I've talked to people about Jesus. And all at once, one guy, he said, what are you doing to me? I said, he, he said, something's happening. He said, I don't understand this. Amen. But he understood that there was something going on. I said, that's the Spirit of God drawing you to Jesus. That's the power of the message. Amen. Oh, I'm telling you, God can get a hold of people as you begin to share, as God opens the door, and God begins to move in their life. I mean, I, I've seen people come to know Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior as I was able to share this gospel. Oh, what a glorious message to be able to share with somebody. Oh, praise God. You've got it in your heart. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. And you pray and ask God to show you how and when to share the gospel with somebody else. Because, you see, he says, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word. When they hear that word, faith will start rising up. Every one of you here today are a result of faith that came by hearing of the word of God. Sometime the word of God got into your spirit, and that's why you're here today. 
That's why you're here today. One day, the power of God broke through. <laughs> Hallelujah. Aren't you glad that power broke through in your life? Aren't you glad that God began to reveal himself to you and you knew that you needed to ask the Lord to forgive you of your sins? And somebody told you he would forgive you. Charles Spurgeon, one day he said, somebody here doesn't think that God can forgive their sin because they murdered somebody. But he said, I want you to know God can forgive you even of that. The man came said, I want to receive Christ as my Savior. I never believed he could forgive me. But he said, God spoke and said, I can forgive. I can make you a new person. Woo! God can get a hold of you, and he can create in you the power of God stirring within your soul. It's a creative work of God. When God moves into your spirit, when his spirit becomes to abide within this tabernacle, you know, the Bible says our body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. Oh, my body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. He said, you've been bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are his. He purchased you with his own blood. The price, the price was heavy. The price cost him his blood. But that blood is still washing away every sin. That blood, this message of the blood of Jesus, I'm telling you, folks, this message about what he can do, what Christ can do, this message is going to go forth out of you, and people are going to come to know Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior. And some of them, you won't even know that you planted a seed till you get in heaven. And they said, hey, I want to thank you for planting that seed into my life. I came to know Jesus, and now I'm up here rejoicing. Thank you, thank you, thank you for sharing Jesus. Thank you, thank you to every preacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ, to every witness of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us this message of hope, this message of, of love, this message of faith, faith, hope, and love, and the greatest of these is love. How many of you know you have that message inside of your heart? I said it's way down in your heart. Hallelujah. And it doesn't matter how much you're persecuted, you will not give up this faith in Jesus because you know him personally. He's your Lord. He's your Savior. You would lay down your life for him. Hallelujah, because he laid down his life for you. Let's stand and let's give him the praise in this house. Hi, I'm Pastor Phil. I'm so glad you were able to be with us for this morning's service. You know, as you heard the Word of God today, I believe the Holy Spirit has spoken to your heart. He knows exactly what you need in your life. And so, this day, I want you just to receive that living Word and apply it to your life and let the healing presence of Jesus flow into your very being. He is Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that healeth us. And so, today, let's receive that healing flow and ministry into our life spiritually, emotionally, physically, whatever you need today, we're in prayer for you that God will meet your needs.